Hello, I'm Mix Miles and my man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll also be starring um, our little tiny Pip, who is our nine week old Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel. We bought her mainly for Riley um, because she will make a fantastic little companion for him. Um, she's he's already in love with her, uh, despite the fact she's a little tiny bit nippy, but uh, she's just a little tiny baby, so that's to be expected. Um, but we're going to go um, do some training with her um, throughout the next coming weeks and years. And just want to introduce you to, to our little Pip. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. She sleeps through the night in her cage, no dramas at all. Last night she slept from about half past 10 through to seven o'clock this morning. Not one noise out of her. The night before that was pretty much the same to about half past six. And the night before that was about half past five. So she's doing absolutely brilliant. She weighs about 4.4 kilos. So she don't weigh a great deal. Uh, it's her first time ever in the old mixed mower shack, which is fantastic news. Um, but what I want to do, um, I don't know if you guys or girls are, are aware, I used to have gun dogs years ago. So what I'm going to do, although Pip will not be worked um, as a gun dog, I'm going to train her to be one. Um, just because the um, the training is a bit more intensive. Come here, sweetheart. The training's a bit more intensive. And um, she, she'll get she'll get the most out of it rather than me. But uh, for, the, for the general stuff, a sit, stay, heel, retrieve, come back, lay down, all that sort of stuff will all be incorporated inside the training. So today's video, all I'm going to be doing is having Pip around the workshop, just getting the use of stuff. And then um, I'm going to make what's called a placement mat or placement pad, which is a, an area where Pip will be asked to come back to every time I ask to do something, she'll come back to that and she'll be rewarded on, on the platform. That way it gives her an absolute guaranteed spot uh, where I would like her to come back to rather than just an average. Um, so if you call your dog back, I might come back past you. What I want Pip to do is to come back to, come back to us right in front of our feet and look up, no nipping. Um, so this is our little tiny Pip. As I say, she's a little tiny blue uh, blue roan, cocker spaniel. Um, she's a purebred, uh, but she's not a pedigree. She's a bit of a loony bird. Um, she's just started nipping, which I want to, I want to nip in the bud. Uh, so she's got plenty of toys. Mrs. P's ordered her a little, a little chew set. Calm yourself down, calm yourself down. All right, loony. Um, but she's a typical spaniel, full of beans, and the attention span of a gnat. But she is absolutely beautiful. But she has just started this little tiny nipping process. And as I say, I want to nip that in the bud because Riley Boy won't appreciate it. So just try and keep her a little bit calm, off my tassels, uh, a little bit calm. And then that way, um, that will soon stop once some baby teeth have come out. I'm not a professional gun dog trainer. I'm not a professional trainer, full stop. Um, but I, I have trained uh, two or three Spaniels before in my time and they've all been working dogs. We've learned to retrieve, pick up, and all that sort of stuff, and all on the whistle and hand signals too. So if you want to see a few videos of me trying to train this little tiny ball of fluff, then um, then let me know in the comment section down below because uh, this could be pretty good for all of us. It'd be beneficial for her because she, she will learn that the, the pad, uh, the platform where, where I'd like her to sit, only good things happen on that platform. Nothing bad will ever happen on that platform. So there's no negative behavior while she's on the carpet. Um, and she'll be fed with little tiny treats and bits and pieces to make sure that that, that is reinforced for a little for a little day to day training. So there you go. Here is our little tiny Pip, who is eight nine weeks old, Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel. She's our newest family pet, no nipping, and we all love her dearly already. Uh, she's a little girl. Uh, Pippin uh, Pippin's a full name, and Pip is for short, and she's quite short. She's a little tiny Cocker Spaniel. Um, she looks a little bit like Martin and Sharon's. Little, little blue roan, they've got like a blue roan spaniel. Um, she's a bit like that, but uh, she is absolutely full of beans and raring to go. So I'm gonna get her on the floor before she falls off and hurts herself because her bones are very soft still. And I'm gonna build myself a little tiny uh, placing pad, it's called. And it's just, if you're not sure, and you wanna maybe train your own dog, then just go onto YouTube and punch in gun dog training placement pad. And that'll show you exactly um, what they're all about. They're a really positive place to be and it just teaches the dog to, to, to sit and stay. If a dog sometimes, if you want a dog to sit and stay, sometimes they do a little tiny shuffle and they, and they creep forward, but by having it on the pad is a definitive, that's where you need to be, so. Um, but she's a super good girl. Um, she's just coming into her own now. She's, she's now just sort of coming out of her shell a little tiny bit. And she's learning day by day what, what we expect from her. But uh, the most important thing with any puppy is to let it be a puppy. It's as simple as that. So don't expect miracles um, from them. Just take your time with them. Let them enjoy themselves. Let them come out and build their own little characters. Just allow the puppy to be a puppy. And then that way, you cold. And then that way, um, you won't go too far wrong. But you know, if you try to install too much too quick, uh, you'll ruin the dog. 
and you only get it get it out of a dog what you put in. It's as simple as that. So without further ado, let's get down on Dirty. Let's build Pip her first ever training placement pad. And then we'll go from there. Pip, come here. On the floor for you. Come on, Pip. Right, so the first thing I want to do is build um, the actual, the, the base for, for this placement pad. Um, and all you've got to remember is just give your dog a little bit of room, not too much. Um, you want it just a little bit longer and a little bit shorter, bearing in mind she is going to grow, okay? So I reckon if I just got my saw, that's about as wide as I want it to be, okay? Because you sit in the middle, there's enough room about six to five inches either side of her. So that would be enough. So all I'm gonna do is just let you slide this saw down. Nice and even if we can get it to run. It don't have to be perfect. As long as we get the gist of it. That should be about enough. I'll just level that up, just to draw a better line. Something like that, and then we just come in here. That'd be about right. As I say, this is manual guesswork. There is no exact science to it, not that I know of. But that space there will be big enough for Pip to, to sit in the middle, a bit of room either side, and when she sits there from the full length of her bum to where her head is, gonna be about there, give her about the same distance either side. So let me get that cut out, and I'll be back to you in two secs. Right, so that's a board cut. Now, where's my dog? There she is. So the next thing to do, because we've got some scrap bits of timber. Now you can buy these pads um, for about 80, between 60 to 80 quid each, something like that. But you can make them out of scrap timber that you will or won't have lying around the house or, or, or in the yard, okay? So they only need to be a little bit raised above um, above ground level. They don't have to be super duper high. You don't put them on a pedestal. The idea is, is just to give them a clear field so they know that that is where they're supposed to sit, stay, and all the rest of it. It just gives that definitive. And what we're trying to do here is trying to encourage the dog to sit on the platform in front of you looking up it sounds very structured right but like i say if you've got a dog going your, your dog's outside walking with another dog or sees another dog coming and you want a dog to come back they should come back to your feet looking up ready to go on the lead and you don't have to dart around trying to chase them to put lead that sort of stuff now i never used to use a lot of leads with my dogs never really had the need to because they were relatively well trained by myself. I don't say I'm not a professional. Now, you don't have to worry about seriously sharp edges of timber on here, because this isn't gonna last forever. This is only gonna last for a little while. Um, but what we're looking for is just a nice, nice square edge. Let me cut that one to fit there. And then I wanna cut another to go onto there, and then one more piece to go into there, and one more piece to go into there. You can see what I'm doing. Building a small platform. Let me get those ones cut up. Back to you in two ticks. Okay, so timber's now been cut up. Where are you, Pip? Come here. Come here, puppy. <laughs> She's been running around the garden like an absolute loony. She's now covered in mud, which is good to see, as a spaniel should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good girl. Right, you're gonna play. Um, right, so with the two ends now cut on the sides, they're all now sitting. As I say, if you haven't cut it exactly right, you know, we're not into carpentry here. We just want it to look relatively good. No massive edges on it is what we're after. But you can see what I'm sort of going for. Now you can, if you want to, you can sand some of it back just to make it a bit more smoother for the dog. But I'm not overly concerned. This is a training platform for them. So all I'm now gonna do is turn that over 
um, drill it and then use deck, uh, wood screws to go through and make sure the count sunk so the dog doesn't pinch itself on it. Get that bit done, I'll be back to you in two seconds. Okay, so that's the first part of it done. And as you can see, all I've done is just, just put some wood around the sides. There's a little gap there, a little gap here. I'm not overly concerned, as I say. What you can do if you want to, you can get your sander out, sand all the edges down, all that sort of stuff if you like. But what you want to do, um, more importantly, here, Pip, what you want to do more importantly is you want to make sure that it's nice and comfy for the dog because it has to be an enjoyable place for the dog to sit. So, up in the loft, some nice bits of off-cut. I didn't cut it to size, that's about right. That ain't too bad, Pip. We'll go for that, I think. What you can do is tuck it over if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna bother. That's not too bad. So I'm just gonna grab my staple gun, and then I'm gonna staple this to the top, and that'll, that'll form a nice little place for her to sit. And when she gets on there, she'll be able to smell her own scent, and she'll know that uh, that's her, where she's supposed to be. Um, and as I say, only good things will happen on here. So lots of treats, lots of encouragement, lots of, not, not fuss so much, but lots of, um, lots of cuddles and strokes might have it because it needs to be a happy place for her. So let me now just get it done. You can use some spray adhesives if you want to, but I, I, I personally, personally wouldn't um, because of a sense on that. So I would just literally just use a bit of um, a staple gun or something like that. Or you can use tacks, whatever you want to do, whatever you've got to hand, uh, just do that. Um, that's about right. I think we'll go with that, Pip. How far's overhang? Overhang's quite a bit, actually. I ain't far out. So I had loads of, brought loads of overcuts down with me, but I didn't, uh, I didn't measure that. So let me find my staple gun. It's been about eight months since I've seen my staple gun, so let me try and find I think it's in my drawer at the top. I'll find that, I'll come back to you, and we'll start stapling that down. Okay, found my staple gun. Can't find all my staples, but I got, should have enough here for task. Now again, common sense should prevail here. All you wanna make sure you do is that all the staples are well home. You don't have to be sticking up for your dog. So each time you put a staple in, just have a quick little, quick little suss on it. Make sure that um, it is where it wants to be. You could use astro turf on here, but I just have a scrap bit of carpet laying about. Okay, just start stapling down. Just make sure you get a really good um, staple down. And as I say, just check each one. Make sure it's down. You don't want the dog to be catching her feet or anything uncomfortable. So go around, all around the edges first I'd say, and just make sure that the actual base is down where it needs to be. As I say, if it's not all the way down, it doesn't have to look pretty. This is just literally somewhere for the dog to sit that, that she, she can familiarize herself with to a positive place. The other advantages are to using this is you can put it in the boot of your car and you can take it away in your boot to your training field or, or wherever it is that you're, you're doing your training. So you can actually take it away to there. Get around to this side, of course, you've got a bit of overhang here. So what you might want to do is go and get your, your sharp knife, your craft knife or whatever it is you're using. I've got a Stanley tip it up onto its side and just make a slit along that cutting edge. Always cutting away from yourself, of course, and not into, not into your hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that all the way down through there. And I'm just gonna staple that to it now, just to hold it in place. Again, I'm checking them as I go. I don't want this dog to have any uh, negative response whilst on the mat. And now grab your, your knife, run it along there, across there, get rid of that bit. And then we can vent. Now if, if any of them don't go down enough, you can just put your hammer to it. I've got one back here that hasn't quite gone down enough, so I'm just trying to fish into the the actual carpet to sort of make a bit of a hole. Just so I know it's got it. There's one up here, that one there. That one hasn't quite got it. I can feel it hasn't. I'm just gonna grab a little tiny hammer. My dog's doing quite well, so first time in a workshop today. Where'd it go, Pip? It's here somewhere. Uh, let me find it. Took my hand off it for a second, now I can't find it. It's there somewhere, I know it is, because I felt it. 
there's one. We'll have that one down a touch. That's better. And there's one here somewhere. There it is there. That's better. So just go all the way around. Anywhere there's a, a, it's, it's just peeled up a little tiny bit. Just, just tuck it down, yeah? Down this edge here as well. Now I want to cut that end off first. Again, just bring, bring the carpet to it and then just cut that off. It doesn't have to be pretty, like I keep saying. This is purely a training device. I can't wait to use it. So you can buy them for about 60 to 80 quid, all professionally done with AstroTurf on them and all looking lovely. Cost of living crisis, I don't think. I'm not doing it. Get right in there, Pip, with it. Back there. Right, so now we're starting to take its shape now. Right, I've got a few more stones, slightly smaller staples now, so that should be good enough for me. So just going around the whole edge, anywhere where it doesn't look quite so tidy, dig a hole, put a staple in, check it. Once you've done that, you can then just look at the center pieces, dig a hole, check it. That's a bit proud. That's better, that got it. Dig a hole. Got him. I got it. So I'm just putting a putting one in anywhere I can where I can get in. Just to stop it slipping about because you, you don't want this to be a slip a slippery surface. You want it to be nice and steady on here. You right, Pip? You've been very good at this noise. That's going now. Now we're away, Pip. Now, Pip hasn't been hasn't been used on a on a placement pad, a placement pad yet, so that's going to be completely new to her. But I'm sure, like any dog, with regards to positive energy. She's gonna love it because she's gonna get treats on there and cuddles and all sorts of that good stuff, which is all everything a dog needs. Dogs all need to have positive energy. Now, this is new for me in regards that I'm actually having a dog indoors. We've always had dogs outdoors in kennels. And despite what people think about that, you're entitled to your own opinion. But as I don't shoot a lot anymore, only due to COVID and what have you. Haven't really been had the chance to go out, um, so this could be double-edged. Is in the regards that um, if I get the opportunity and um, to go shooting and what have you, then um, Pip will potentially be trained to do it, which would be great. I think we're nearly there. Now that does add a little bit of weight to your. Um, to your, your pad. Now you can put a little handle on there if you want to, but just be mindful, that didn't go, just be mindful where you put the handle. I recommend having the handle at the front, uh, at the back, because you will always, when a dog comes to you, you will always stand at one end, not at the sides, all at one end. So if a dog comes to you, it comes onto the pad, sits onto the pad, looks up and uh, gives you your, the ball or what have, you, what have you. As I say, it sounds very structured, right? But it's only discipline. You only get out of a dog, what I keep saying, what you put in. You put nothing in, you get nothing out. Don't like armpit. I don't come back out, Pip. It's quite thick, that corner, Pip. I got him. Right, so now, last thing to do is just have a bit of a trim up, where we can. So it's just an edge here I want to tidy up, if possible. 
That's it. Now what you can do now is just burn the ends. I've got a little tiny bit of mat gas. Just to burn the ends up and it stops them from fraying. If I can find my map gas, Pip, what did you do with it? Because um, my shed's a bit of a mess at the moment. I'm in the middle of doing lots of different stuff. So let me find my map gas and I'll be back to you in two seconds. Okay, found it. So with your map gas, just be careful because carpet is flammable, right? Just go careful. So all we're looking to do is not burn the carpet, just apply heat near it. Okay, so start well away. Literally, we're not after it burning. Okay, we just literally just want it just to soften up. See where there's fluff up there? Just burn that back. And all the fibers will then stick together. This is one of the advantages to using AstroTurf. You can pretty much cut it to the size you want, but with, uh, with this, you can just literally just warm it up. And all the time my dog is sat right beneath me. He's just here. So she's not scared. All these new noises. Okay, that'll do. That'll cool down a bit. I don't want to burn my dog. A bit warm there, Pip. Uh, blown off. Right, so let, let that cool off. We come back. Good girl. Pip. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. And that's what I'm after. Just after the dog, just to settle down onto the pad. I'm not holding her, just encouraging her. That's good enough. Keep it nice, short, and simple. She's really interested which is good. Now the, the, the carpet does smell at the moment. It's all, all brand new smells to her. And she is relatively still a baby, as I say. Pip. Good girl, good girl. So all we want her to do is just sit on the pad and do nothing else just for now. Because as, as the sit, stay and heal comes in, then uh, we'll encourage her to play. Pip. Good girl, come on. Yep, Pip. Where are you? I can't see you. On the pad, Pip. Pip, come on. Good girl. Good girl. That's all we want to do, just, just to approach the pad to begin with, that's all we need. So there you go. That's how you build your first placement pad for your pup. And when they get used to it, it becomes an invaluable tool for their training, for their sit, stay and heal, which is fantastic. So there you go. Hopefully you find this video helpful. This is Pip, our newest member of our family, and you'll be seeing a lot more of her very, very soon.